Hello and welcome back to AIBC Summit YouTube channel. Joining me here today is the CEO and founder of Unifinity, tokenizing and gamifying the education system here in the Philippines. And we'll dive in more on that later as we welcome Veronica Andrino. She's also the current Dash Philippines head and ambassador and as well as advisor of blockchain companies. So Veronica, it's great to talk to you today. Hi, Annie. Thank you so much for inviting me here to your show. So hi, is everyone. Well, it's truly a pleasure to catch up with you again. And well, for the sake of our audience, let's start with how you got into the industry and how you came about with the concept of Unifinity. Tell us all about that. Well, that's a good question, Yanni. So, um, hi everyone. So, my name is Veronica and I've been involved into the crypto community and industry since the last five years. And this is the fifth year that is marking my, um, my memories into the space itself. So, I've been deeply, deeply involved. It's because uh, the first time I was first introduced into the cryptocurrencies due to different types of opportunities into the space itself. So, I invested myself some few bitcoins back then and then afterwards i was one of those who got lucky to get good profit back then afterwards i saw that there's a lot of problems and um, changes that is going into the space itself so i started to dig deeper and study harder on what this space can offer especially to different industries and then i saw that the blockchain industry itself could definitely help revolutionize the education system. This is why back in 2018, we come up with an idea to build a decentralized application that can help enhance the current education system. Now, doing that then, there's few other companies as well that are looking into the uh, education space by providing courses, learning materials, and so on. So what I did is that I started learning the, and as well as creating different sorts of events into the universities and institutions such as known as Vibe.ph, which is Crypto Massive Adoption Roadshow. Afterwards, um, Iman from Sigma, uh, he invited me to present as well into Malta, as well as into some of those other roadshows that you guys have. So it was truly a pleasure as well working with you guys in AIBC. And I was very, very inspired because there are many Filipinos in here who really wanted to learn more about uh, what blockchain can offer and uh, what cryptocurrency is. It is because I know that blockchain can provide a solution that can help enhance the current problems of the education, especially here in the Philippines. Well, I love hearing your backstory. It's just very inspiring. Um, but how's the virtualization of Unifinity during COVID-19 and how has it impacted your company? Well, that's a good question. So the virtualization here in the Philippines itself, uh, we have a lot of problems during back this COVID-19. So since March, there's a lot of problems that were being encountered by the schools were in fact that they are not ready. They are not prepared to operate the, during the pandemic. Most of the schools and institutions itself are shut down and they cannot operate due to so many uh, issues when it comes to ICT infrastructures and the students, they don't really have um, these uh, capability to buy the good phones and smartphones or mobile devices. So those are the other problems that the education is currently facing. Not to mention that the schools are not prepared into this type of pandemic but to be honest this is the whole industry's problem as itself now this is where we decided to create an application such as the virtual classroom to be offered into the education that's to the schools wherein we will be using the web-based or browser-based where they don't need to download anything and we will we would want to offer it as well at the very most uh, cost efficient and low cost solution as well to the institution so that we can help those schools who cannot afford to pay an expensive software, especially in an ed tech. Well, uh, a while ago, you mentioned the current situation of the education landscape here in the Philippines. Do you, would you like to add anything more into that um, aspect? Well, the current education landscape here in the Philippines is that we have a total of almost 30 million students. Now, out of those 30 million students, not everyone is having 
uh, a good time when it comes to their studies. I'm hearing a lot of complaints as well as like uh, problems coming from the other interns and the students that I have been interviewing and they mentioned that they are still trying to catch up and they're still trying to cope up when it comes to this uh, new norm. So one part of it is that the students here is not fully equipped when it comes to these ad certain adjustments because back then we are always used into the traditional education landscape, correct? Now, on this traditional classroom setup, we are used to interacting with our teachers, going to schools, and like with the other countries where they're they're a bit more forward thinking thinker and they already introduced uh, virtualization into the other countries such as in Korea, in China, in Japan, in Egypt, they are also now using the digital types of classroom setup. Now in the Philippines, this would be the first uh, movement because what COVID did is that it did expedite the, the process of virtualization and the introduction here due to that we cannot operate as a normal uh, uh, operation anymore. Now, the students now are having a hard time to cope up when it comes to this. This is why some of the schools, especially like other K-12 students, are not really studying as of the moment. And the schools are currently shut down and they cannot afford to even operate as well with the same setup like the other countries. So there's a lot of problems that are involving into this space as of the moment. Well, Veronica, it's it's great to hear from you that the Philippines is catching up um, together with other countries that are adopting this uh, sort of technology. And how, but how will this pandemic situation affect the Filipinos of the next generation? I guess in terms of education system. Well, that's a good question. So as we all know that this ongoing pandemic has accelerated the process of virtualization of many uh, businesses as well as in this industry itself. No. So it has been more than a year, I think half a year now that we have been confided inside our home with this highly contagious pathogen, which is what they call it in social media. And ever since this COVID-19 virus uh, propagates our human contract, uh, governments worldwide have already restricted the citizens as well as all of our movements. Not to mention that the education is heavily affected Affected. So this transition is not actually without any changes and business will still need to prioritize their business as itself and the schools definitely need to uh, move on as well on operating and opening the schools into uh, for us but the problem is that not all of these technologies are being widely available, especially to the educations and the students itself are having a hard time to cope up and as well as to continue the studies due to so many problems such as ICT infrastructure and not everyone is fully equipped to have mobile devices, good tablets and good uh, resources. This is why I believe that um, hopefully next year, we will be able to find a better solution as well together with all of this ICT infrastructure to be upgraded and updated. So I believe that the government should definitely look into this type of solutions offering to the upscaling of the education side because I, I am a believer that education is the key to adoption. So in order for the students and the schools and industries to fully understand what blockchain technology is, is that we should start upgrading and upscaling what is the current foundation that is definitely needed, which is the ICT infrastructure, as well as providing support to the educations, especially to the students. Because as we always say, that the kabataan ay ang pag-asa ng bayan, because the kids is the future, of the the kids is our future so they need to be updated and they need to have all the support that they can get especially at this moment love it love it fantastic veronica this has been such a wholesome discussion i enjoyed it very much and uh, thank you for your time and i hope to speak with you again soon yeah thank you so much Yanni, for this call. you're very welcome well, we hope you enjoyed this segment and if you do have questions you would like to be answered, please share your thoughts in the comment box down below.